Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over Live. My next guest was kidnapped and tortured by Islamic terrorists a decade ago. He is a Chaldean priest in the Diocese of Erbil. Tonight, he shares the plight of thousands of Christian families who have been forced to live in exile in Kurdistan to escape genocide at the hands of the Islamic State. Will they ever be able to return to their homeland? Please welcome Father Douglas Bazi. Father, thank you for being here. Shalom uh, Allah. Peace be with you. Uh, and, and with you. Uh, tell me, you, you are, of course, in the Chaldean Diocese in Erbil. Two million people in 2003, today down to 200,000. Liz, what, what, what is the state of the diocese and the people in it now? Many, so many have scattered. I mean, is there, can you rebuild with what's left? You know, just let's imagine in 2014, in one day, we lose, we lost four dioceses. They disappear in mm. one day just from Mosul. Wow. So, uh, uh, you know, when I talk about my people, you know, my people, they are not numbers. They are mm. person. They That's are right. people. But, you know, it's really hard to say goodbye every day to your people. So... Mm -hmm. Even we are a few, but day by day, we are actually not going. We are getting smaller day by day. Mm. So we are talking about today 200,000, but act believe me, there are less. In five, in five years, we are going to talk about another number, and I don't think it's going to be more than 5,000 wow. individuals. It's unbelievable. And you fault the United States invasion followed by the Obama administration decision to withdraw troops. Is that, is that who you fault for the state of affairs that we find ourselves in? That did create the power vacuum, those you, two events. You know, when they ask me about what you think like before or what's happened, if it was, you are with when the America, because you know, in Iraq is uh, really, it was, uh, you know, hard to call it what, invasion or called it like mm -hmm. a freedom mm -hmm. uh, operation. And we will uh, struggle with that word. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll get killed by uh, if you mistake, you know, right. with the, but to me, if I confer on the situation like worse and bad, I will choose bad, at least bad. Is where it's better than worse, yeah. and it was actually it was really big mistake to get in. Yep. More bigger to pull out. When the Obama administration pulled. When the they pulled out, it was like out. it was like invitation to all tourists. Tell them, okay, we are leaving. We'll come, we'll come back, or you can come again and mm -hmm. take our or replace. So we find ourselves that we are. No one actually taking care about I mean, us. Pe people don't understand. Whole villages, whole towns evacuated overnight. I mean, this is what happened and continues to happen with rapidity. 11,000 displaced Christian families. 17 centers you now maintain in Erbil. What are those centers like? Are these families? Are, is it a, a, a individual members of families? Who is there and why are they remaining? Those people, they force them to leave as the, the city of Mosul mm -hmm. because they give them just 24 hours to leave. Remember, 24 hours, if they are not going to uh, do the three conditions to live among Muslims under the Islamic State, mm -hmm. convert, if not, pay taxes. And they went to pay taxes, but they told them you have to pay 3,000, 4,000 till 8,000 per each one, per a month, as a Texas. Wow. Of course, people, they don't have that money, you know, it's a yeah. huge money. Third, leave or you'll be killed. So the f people find themselves, they have to leave. And actually, we received around 17, one, seven thousand families. But since that day, 10 now, we lose 5,000 people already, they, you know, they live. Where do they go? They went to Turkey, they went to Lebanon, to Jordan, they are looking for, and they, they walked to, to Europe. Wow. And now we have 11,000 among them, 400 Yazidis, and also we have a couple hundred with the, with the Muslim Sunnis. We are taking care about all of them. And what are the conditions of these people? I mean, they're, they're, living, in, they're living in centers, in camps. 
this can't be comfortable or enjoyable for them. I, I no work to be found? Sure, I thank you because you are using this word center. Mm -hmm. By the way, because we don't like to use it camp, it's a negative yeah. word. And, you know, logically those people, they are not recognized by UN because uh -huh. they are inside the country, not outside the country. Uh -huh. So because we are, they are inside the country, that means they are IDPs. So IDPs, according Displaced to... Displaced persons. So they are so they cannot help them. Mm. So actually, who take care? Always church has a big heart. Always church mm. is ready there. So we are taking care about those people till now. So uh, why don't those who leave qualify for refugee status, Iraqi Christians? W w the United States has already declared this a genocide. Why aren't we recognizing these people as refugees in need of immediate aid? This is what we are, t what we are trying to speak out to tell, look, 10 now actually who help the, 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 my people, they are those organizing and that's mean a private money comes mm -hmm. from, you know, uh, our organization, Catholic, like Bishop Catholic uh, uh, Conference, like mm -hmm. Caritas, uh, Knights of Columbus, yeah. a church in need, uh, uh, Nazareth, and also helpiraq.org from Detroit. Mm -hmm. Believe me, if, if those organization, if just they stop help, my people, they are going to die in mm -hmm. 30 days. Wow. And the Chaldeans have gone through so much suffering in the last century. When you look back at this last hundred years, Amazing, unbelievable suffering for these people. We are the Church of East Eted Medincha, and that's mean. Officially, they call us the Church of Martyrs. Mm. Sometimes they call us the Church of Blood. Believe me, mm. in my country, the blood of our martyrs more than oil. Wow. Tell me about the Iraqi Constitution. People don't appreciate the Constitution that the United States helped to broker, helped create created the space and the political leaders to craft this Iraqi constitution. What does it say? Does it protect Iraqi Christians who are the first occupiers of that land, the first native people of that land? That's right. If we look to the, the new constitution of Iraq, mm -hmm. that one they created under the uh, United States or under the, all, uh, sure. uh, the Western countries. It's written in the first paragraph, that one based on democracy. Of course, the all Western country international community, when they look to that constitution, yeah. oh, oh my goodness. It's a democratic How? document. But done, okay? Mm -hmm. Go to the next paragraph. No one can uh, create any bill, any law to be against the Sharia and Quran. That's mean forget about the first one. It's, huh. That's mean it, inv it invalidates the top of the, the freedom-loving liberty mentioned in the top of the document because it enshrines really Sharia law. It's really a second Quran in some ways in, in, in Iraq, yes? You know, my country, my constitution actually is 100% religion state. It is hmm. not democracy state at all. Hmm. I give you another example. It's written in our, in our constitution that they have to protect those people, I'm talking about Shi'is, when they go to the shrine, Ali, the Muhammad uh, cousin. So it is, they have the government have to protect them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when they were, the, the, the 40,000 soldier protecting the people, they were just going to walk to yeah. pray in Najaf. Yeah. And the same time, the Islamic State, they were killing Yazidis, our brothers, Yazidis, mm -hmm. our sisters there. And no one actually sent those soldiers to protect which one is what was really that one need to help people or just to go to the prey in that time? Mm -hmm. Father, I need to talk about your story, which is harrowing. In 2006, you're offering mass, a rocket hits the church, you're shot in the leg by an AK-47 and kidnapped. What happened? How long did this torture go on? And share with people the rest of this journey, if you can call it that. I appreciate to not look to me and uh, as a hero or, you know, I am a silent for many years. I never talk for mm -hmm. many reasons. One, mm -hmm. because who I am to complain about, about my life. Yeah. And this is the cost to be Christian in Middle East, especially in Iraq. You know, but you're a survivor and people need to hear that story. Yes. I start sharing my, my story when I saw what happened in Mosul 2014. Mm. And I say, okay, they kill our grandpa, we, and we forgive them. They kill our fathers, we, we forgive them. They kill us, we forgive them. But if they are going to kill our kids, 
we, that is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. That's why I start talk. Mm -hmm. I survival many times. Yes, they attacked the church. I got shot by AK-47 in my leg. Uh, I been kidnapped for nine days. I was just a normal Sunday. I finished the mass and went to visit a friend. I found immediately they, they, they blocked the highway, put me in the, my car in the trunk, and they took me I don't know where. And mm. uh, I spent horrible nine days. With those nine days, they tied my hand, yeah. my eyes, mm -hmm. with the chains and with the big lock here. Wow. And I used that chance for praying my rosary. Mm. And also to put a sign on the wall, how, how many days I am there. So each day went past, I make a small sign mm. to count how many days I'm there. They let me without water four days. The day fifth, they offer water. The day when I just arrive, one of them... Uh, they Were they took, holding you for ransom? You know, they told me actually after. They told mm. me, look, we don't know you personal. We have a list mm. and your name is a list. Oh. And there is a number in front of your name. If you are going to bring you here, mm. so some, another people, another group, they are going to pay to us. And also we are going pay, asking money from your relative. Uh -huh. That's been double benefit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. During the day, I was the spiritual father for those, day, for those people. Oh, really? The, for your captors? Yes. They were asking me a lot of questions. I was just like this and, you know. Uh, and one of them, I remember, he was always uh, ask me what I should do with my wife. <laughs> That's mean Iraqi ladies, sometimes they are, you know, demanding. Uh, and I was telling him, look, you know, you have to tell her that I love you. You know, you uh, are my uh, honey. And the same people during the night, they torch me and call me infidel. The day follow, ask for forgiveness. And uh, sometimes they told me, I'm was who put you by pistol in your bag. I'm was. The first day they, they smashed my, my nose. By, with a hammer. That was with the knee, one of the, mm. the day six, yes, with the hammer, they, they, they broke my teeth and one of my disc oh and back. They released me after nine days. And uh, 10 now, when I go to my bed, I want just to be sure there is water beside my bed. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. Given your experience, and that is just a little microcosm of what's happening to your people every day, for years this has been going on, decades. What's the answer? What is the answer? Is it religious involvement? Is it we need to have an, occup uh, uh, an, an army come in to pr create a safe zone for your people? What do you suggest? You know, I suggest first, here be, be our voice that your brother and sister, they are they are dying there yeah. because we don't have anyone support us, you know? Mm -hmm. Now the people actually start because of the Islamic State, they start hearing about Christian. Then now the people, they thought that Christian in Iraq, they are just a couple of years ago. Right. We are from the first century. Mm -hmm. Where is the Christianity born, actually? Mm -hmm. Again, be our voice. And second, don't send soldiers, please. Send teachers, send educated people. Mm. We cannot defeat the Islamic State by, by weapons, we can defeat them by knowledge, by forgiveness. But Father, how can you send teachers? How can you send educators when they're, when they're, they're going to be killed? When change, you have an occupying force? Yeah, change the constitution. Mm -hmm. Make all the people to be equal under equal, the law. Equal right, mm -hmm. full citizen, not to be like second class or third class. Why I have to be in my country? Why it was written in my ID, non-Muslim? Because I am not Muslim. They, they have to write in my ID, non-Muslim. That's mean me and the others, we are infidels. No way. We should have, you know, right, clean constitution. Mm -hmm. Keep all people, they are equal together. Mm -hmm. Right, equal. And believe me, if they are, I know why they, are, they cannot do that. Because if we, if really my government wants to have religion freedom, uh, f uh, freedom, uh, speech freedom, or mm -hmm. let's just start with the religion freedom. Believe me, if they are going to do that, change the constitution, mm -hmm. me and you, if we are going to meet after 20 years, you will, f you will find the Muslim in my country, they are going to be minority. Hmm. Fascinating. Father Bansi, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you would like to help Father and his people, visit helpiraq.org. Help Iraq. Dot org 
They're doing good work, and we'll be praying for you and your people in the days ahead, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you.